After Endgame, I became more of a casual Marvel fan, but Spider-Man still remains one of my favorite superheroes, and I am still a fan of him. It just so happens that Spider-Man 2 came out... Not this one. This one. This new Spider-Man game on PS5 came out, so how does it compare to the original? Is it good? More like DLC? Or is it a worthy sequel? Let's find out. Although, I will gush some, but I do have some critiques. I have done reviews of the previous Spider-Man games on PlayStation, but Miles Morales was a few years ago and the first one on the PS4 was one of my first videos, and it sucks now, so I'm going to do a brief recap because this new one builds off of those. First of all, web swinging was fun in Spider-Man 2 from 2004 in Insomniac's first Spider-Man game, Miles Morales, and it is still fun in this game. It is still one of the most simple but fun pleasures I have experienced in a video game. I don't fast travel much in these games because of it, and I normally do in other games. I replayed the remastered Insomniac Spider-Man game in preparation for this game, and it is still a good game. My number three favorite PS4 game in fact. Heck, I haven't thought about it being one of my top 15 favorite games of all time, though I'm thinking it might be this new game right now. Thinking back to that review, this game is none other than Insomniac <laughs> Did games. I really talk well known this for slow? Games such as and, and did I really sound that bored all of too? Them being placed they also <laughs> developed Sunset Overdrive, oh, which is an exclusive for can't. the Xbox One. Old and awkward video aside, most of my thoughts from that review still hold up today. It's still a fun game to play, and I thought it had a good story. My one complaint about it were the boss fight, as even as I replayed it, it was mainly dodge attack, dodge attack. I find the boss fights rather lacking as I find myself dodging, attacking, dodging, attacking with an occasional web shooter here and there and so forth. It got to be a problem in the City Never Sleeps DLC when they added minions. They're not bad, I just found them good. Not great, good at best. At least that's what my opinion is. It was an otherwise difficult game to critique, but this game has great boss fights. I will talk about them here in a bit. Miles Morales, on the other hand, I'm still a proud owner of that PS5 launch title. My big problem with it though was it was short to the point that I would suggest renting it and instead of buying it to a casual fan. I do think Miles Morales had the best soundtrack. There are songs from it that I listen to on Spotify from time to time, whereas these other two Insomniac games, I forget the music as soon as I shut them off. But you're not here for me to talk about the previous games. You're here for this one, so let's talk about it now. Now let's talk gameplay and I am going to keep this section spoiler free. So stating the obvious, you play as both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. Now you may be wondering, since Miles has invisibility and electric powers whereas Peter does not, is Miles the better Spider-Man? It may appear on paper, but no. I actually did not have a reason to use invisibility much in this game. Those sections where you pick off enemies one by one by being stealthy, I remember doing a bunch of those with Peter and only twice with Miles, and the thing is, Peter has large spaces to work with and a lot of hiding places whereas these sections with miles the areas are smaller and hard to hide so it balances out when it comes to these sections as far as miles's electric powers i'm going to call them that instead of venom powers because venom is one of the main baddies in this game that is the main difference between miles and peter peter's equivalent are these additional four mechanical limbs making him more like a spider and symbiote powers that he gets from being venom in the story do you see those two inputs at the bottom 
bottom of the screen. The left side are the character specific abilities and the right are spider gadgets shared by the two characters. The game controls great but one thing I think is a step back is do you see how the character specific abilities are on the left side of the screen? That always trips me up because I have multiple times pressed the d-pad only for it to be the face buttons on the right side of the controller. I will talk more about the story specifically in the spoiler section but I've heard other people say that this game's plot is just mid, not as good, or not as emotional as the one on PS4. Based on my experience, I would say... What? I swear, it seems like I enjoyed this game more than some people did. To be honest, I loved this game's plot. I was actually engaged from beginning to end. I'm still keeping it spoiler free, but the reason is probably Venom, Kraven the Hunter, and Mysterio are my favorite Spider-Man villains. The story is one of the main selling points in this game for me, but I'll talk more about it in the spoiler section. I am proud to say my criticism regarding the boss fights in the first game have been addressed here. I mean, the Prowler fight in Miles Morales is one of my favorite bosses in these games, but the ones here are great. The boss fight with Peter in the Venom costume had me use bells, which is Venom's weakness. The Mysterio fight at the end of this one side quest with interesting set pieces, which one thing I'll give credit to the first game for is Mr. Negative's boss fight also had interesting set pieces. The Lizard boss fight is really good too, where you would fight him underground then chase him around the city. Note that this game is also an expanded New York, which does not add much to be honest. I mean, Tears of the Kingdom took Breath of the Wild map, added Sky Islands, the Underground, and the thing is, they felt different. In this game though, this is where I think they struggled to get creative. I love New York, don't get me wrong, but the added suburban areas and the expanded areas across the river does not really add much. I did notice the aesthetic differences where Manhattan has all the tall buildings and the added areas have more trees and houses, but I still play the game the same way, therefore they still feel like Manhattan in some ways. I think this game overall is a worthy sequel, but that part feels kind of DLC-ish to me. A new feature is you can glide through the air, which is what you would use to cross the river and skiing on the water is fun, but honestly, you would be surprised that this game's story is about the same length as the first game. Heck, it probably even takes as much time to complete. And I also cannot deny, I've come across glitches in my playthrough, but nothing game breaking. Alright, now time to talk about the story in the spoiler section. I'm not going to be too specific. I'm going to stick to key things as much as possible. The game opens up two years prior with Harry Osborn, who has a life-threatening illness, looking at a symbiote and then being in the machine with it. This is important. Peter Parker, who is late for work, is teaching the class Miles is in, but then there was a disturbance outside. After an awkward exchange between him and Miles in front of their class, they suit up to go take care of Sandman. Once he's taken care of, Peter gets fired from his teaching job, and as a working adult, I feel that one. He then meets with Mary Jane, who I admit looks better in the first game, even though the same model was used. And I've gotten used to Peter's new face, but I look at the first one and think, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's at the house Peter grew up in, and Harry meets with them. I won't go into too much detail here, but the game spends a lot of time fleshing out the relationship between Harry and Peter. I really think it sells the idea that they are friends. Craven the Hunter comes to New York as a hunting ground to hunt Spider-Man's enemies. Peter and Miles meet up at the raft, which is a maximum security prison. And okay, I'm looking at Scorpion here, wondering why they did not take off his armor. Or is some of it mutated into him? I'm confused, but it looks mechanical, not natural in this game. Martin Lee is shown after. I've heard people say Miles has no flaws in this game, but I disagree. He struggles with resentment towards Martin for the death of his father in this game, which I cannot say I blame him. Craven captures Mr. Negative, kills Scorpion, and I need to bring up Black Cat for a second. I know she was by in the comics The Evil That Men Do and Mary Jane and Black Cat, but here it comes out of nowhere in this game. I'm not sure if it's being woke or an obscure nod to those comics, but her going to Paris would have made more sense if she went to steal the art that is there because of how the first game established her. I mean, the freaking Mona Lisa is in France. I'm going to fast forward a bit. Venom may be more Eddie Brock thing, but Harry is actually Venom in this game. The symbi 
video actually helps with his sickness. As someone who's read Craven's Last Hunt, I was excited to see Craven in this game as in that comic, he buries Spider-Man alive. In this game, he nearly kills him. With MJ and Harry there, the symbiote transfers itself from Harry to Peter and now Peter is alive and well. The characters do try to figure out how to transfer it back to keep Harry in good health, but it does stick with Peter for a while. One thing I really like about Venom is he does bring out the dark side in people and that is a concept I find very interesting. Peter goes berserk, started becoming full of himself, but hey, he's stronger because of the suit. I am someone who likes Spider-Man 3. Harry is not looking too well. Peter who was very concerned about his friend but is now more worried about himself because of the symbiote and now he refuses to give up the thing that makes Harry better. He even swings away ditching his best friend. When I saw this part, I thought of a scene that was similar to this one in Amazing Spider-Man 2 and I have to say it is much better here. The relationship between Harry and Peter in that movie was not too fleshed out. I did not feel anything when Peter regrettably refuses to help Harry, but in this game though, I was emotionally evolved and was engaged in how the story was playing out. Miles begrudgingly meets with Mr. Negative because they were both captured by Kraven the Hunter. During this boss fight, Mr. Negative brings out Miles' insecurities. Again, why do people say he has no flaws in this game? But then they both team up to help Peter as he's gone berserk. Miles convinces Peter to get out of the symbiote suit. The symbiote suit aka Venom goes back to Harry and now he's full on Venom and it's awesome how you play as Venom in this part. I wish I could play more of him. You then fight Kraven as Venom. Kraven was satisfied he found a worthy opponent who bested him before Venom kills him. The city now has a symbiote crisis. Do you remember that silly pigeon side quest in the first game? That gets wrapped up in an emotional way in this game. Just thought I'd point that out. I do like the Scream boss fight because I pointed out in my first Spider-Man review that I wanted Mary Jane as Demo Goblin in a sequel because the idea of her being a villain sounded interesting and while she is not Demo Goblin here, the idea is there for a brief bit and reveals her dark side as well. Peter gets the white anti-venom suit but now I'm going to fast forward to the end where Venom was the final boss. This is a fantastic final boss but I I already made my point about the bosses, so moving on. Harry and Pete make amends before Harry dies. Miles then encourages Peter to live life as Peter Parker and not Spider-Man. The end. I will say, as a working adult man, I think this is a good ending for Peter. As other stories, Miles replaces him because Peter dies, but here, Peter can now focus on life, job, his relationship with MJ, etc. I do not understand why people say this game does not have as many emotional beats as the first one, but I do think it did right a wrong of Amazing Spider-Man 2, and it put Venom to better use than in Spider-Man 3. The game took time to flesh out that villain. My main disappointment is how much more of a Peter Parker story this is than a Miles one. Miles has a very small arc of his own, and the rest is mainly him helping out Peter and his story. I did expect more of an even balance between the two. Also, ugh, I'm so disappointed I did not get to see Carl at the end of this one side quest. He was just teased. Maybe DLC. Alright, let's wrap this up. In my opinion, I think the game has more flaws objectively, but as of the time of this upload, I think it's more fun subjectively. If I'm being objective, the final verdict is probably an A, maybe a B, but I had such a good time with this game that I'm going to give it an S. It's one of my favorite games of 2023. Heck, while I was playing, I thought maybe it was my game of the year, but I'm back and forth between this and Tears of the Kingdom and have not played enough Baldur's Gate 3 yet. There probably is going to be a third game and if they do make one they are going to need to take some risks because New York has reached its full potential in this game I find and it would just be stale if used again but if they make a Spider-Verse game there is potential for several different versions of New York were they to keep the setting. If Miles is going to be the main Spider-Man going forward I will say this I do not want Peter Parker completely out of the picture. Heck in the potential Spider-Verse game why not be able to play as Peter B. Parker Parker or several other versions of Peter Parker. Anyway, thank you all for watching and if you enjoyed please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And take care.